Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Thursday, the 28th of September. I'm reading the Church of England's Common Worship Daily Prayer, morning prayer on Thursday in Ordinary Time. You'll find the words in the book towards the beginning after prayer during the day in the morning and evening prayer during Ordinary Time section, morning prayer on Thursday. At the Church of England's website, downloadable as app for Apple Android device, Arima's website, although Simon Kershaw does uh, pretty much all the behind-the-stage, backstage work. Um, you're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday for this. Sunday, traditional communion in the morning, study and song with hymns in the evening. You may join by Zoom, code on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook and the video will stay there for the best part of the month and the audio will be on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel forever. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's blessing. God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O oh, let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on a fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. You'll find the Psalms at the back of the book. We've uh, got a goodly clutch this morning. Numbers 56, 57 and 63. 5, 6, 5, 7, 6, 3. In God I trust and will not fear. Have mercy on me, O God, for they trample over me. All day long they assault and oppress me. My adversaries trample over me all the day long. Many are they that make proud war against me. In the day of my fear I put my trust in you, in God whose word I praise. In God I trust and will not fear, for what can flesh do to me? All day long they wound me with words. Their every thought is to do me evil. They stir up trouble. They lie in wait. Marking my steps, they seek my life. Shall they escape for all their wickedness? In anger, O God, cast the peoples down. You have counted up my groaning, put my tears into your bottle. Are they not written in your book? Then shall my enemies turn back on the day when I call upon you. This I know, for God is on my side. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise, in God I trust and will not fear, what can flesh do to me? To you, O God, will I fulfil my vows. To you will I present my offerings of thanks. For you will deliver my soul from death and my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> in God I trust, and will not fear. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul takes refuge in you. 
In the shadow of your wings will I take refuge until the storm of destruction has passed by. I will call upon the Most High God, the God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me and rebuke those that would trample, over, trample upon me. God will send forth his love and his faithfulness. I lie in the midst of lions, people whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens and your glory over all the earth. They have laid a net for my feet, my soul is pressed down. They have dug a pit before me and will fall into it themselves. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake my soul, awake harp and lyre, that I may awaken the dawn. I will give you thanks, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to you among the nations. For your loving kindness is as high as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> my soul is thirst for God, even for the living God. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. And I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand shall hold me fast. But those who seek my soul to destroy it shall go down to the depths of the earth. Let them fall by the edge of the sword, and become a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. All those who swear by him shall be glad, for the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. <clears throat> Scrolling past our first reading to the Canticle, the Song of the Covenant, turning in our books to back to morning prayer on Thursday. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. If you are following electronically, there will be a link at the bottom of the Ecclesiasticus is it reading, um, which I am going to use, and we are therefore reading from Ezekiel. Not that I've got anything particularly against the Apocrypha, but there might be people following who don't have access to the words. So we're turning to Ezekiel, third or fourth of the major prophets. So if you've got a Bible with both covenants, the first and the second, turn to halfway through and move towards the back. So halfway through you'll hit the wisdom stuff, Psalms and Proverbs. Moving towards the back, the prophets after Isaiah and Jeremiah, about there. You'll find Ezekiel, we're looking for the large number three within the book of Ezekiel. Three, that's the chapter number at the head of the paragraph in the margin there chapter 3 and within chapter 3 we're reading from verse 12 to the end if you are following electronically scroll down beyond the uh, reading you are given and there may be a link there was on my presentation in my tablet in the app and that takes me to Ezekiel 3 from 12 Bibles are available online if that doesn't open for you NRSV New Revised Standard Version. Then the Spirit lifted me up, and as the glory of the Lord rose from its place, I heard behind me the sound of a loud rumbling. It was the sound of the wings of the living creatures brushing against one another, and the sound of the wheels beside them that sounded like a loud rumbling. 
The Spirit lifted me up and bore me away. I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit, the hand of the Lord being strong upon me. I came to the exiles at Tel Abib, who lived by the river Cheva, and I sat there among them stunned for seven days. At the end of seven days, the word of the Lord came to me, Mortal, I have made you a sentinel for the house of Israel. Wherever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them a warning from me. <clears throat> if I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give them no warning, and do not speak to the wicked from their wicked way in order to save their life, those wicked persons shall die for their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, and they do not turn from their wickedness or from their wicked way, they shall die for their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Again, if the righteous turn from their righteous Ness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before them, they shall die because you have not warned them. They shall die for their sin and their righteous deeds that they have done shall not be remembered, but their blood I will require at your hand. If, however, you warn the righteous not to sin and they do not sin, they shall surely live because they took warning and you will have saved your life. Then the hand of the Lord was upon me there, and he said to me, Rise up, go out into the valley, and there I will speak with you. So I rose up and went out into the valley. And the glory of the Lord stood there like the glory that I had seen by the river Cheva, and I fell on my face. The Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and he spoke with me and said to me, Go, shut yourself inside your house. As for you, mortal, cords shall be placed on you, and you shall be bound with them, so you cannot go out among the people. I will make your tongue cling to the roof of your mouth, so that you shall be speechless and unable to reprove them, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Let those who hear hear, those who refuse to hear refuse, for they are a rebellious house. So it's interesting that we've got um, the opening paragraph here is really connected to the reading yesterday. It's kind of a conclusion. Um, it's almost like uh, a warm down after exercise, which had this extraordinary vision, which just makes no sense at all, trying to recreate the experience of being in God's presence in words. Wheels at right angles to each other, covered in eyes, wings standing up, poking down, making noise like many warriors moving about any which way they want to. Um, and then one like a human, um, they, these beings had many faces, one like a human, there were four of them, one like a human um, in front of sort of a spectral, as in spectrum rather than as in uh, ghostly, um, sort of miasma of colour, loins of fire and all that kind of stuff, on what was like a seat throne, just completely crazy. And then here we've just got, and there was a sound of rumbling, which was the sound of their wheels rushing against each other. And then I was taken away. Bitten, I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. Just, I guess, complexed, over, perplexed, overwhelmed. And he, he finds himself um, with the exiles of Tel Abib living by Cheva, and he sits among them, stunned for seven days. So um, we're told that he's an exile yesterday. I kind of guessed that. I think I can't remember quite why, but there was a line which suggests they were in exile. So we've got exiles at Tel Aviv. I don't know where that means they are at um, in Babylon or in Egypt. So the privileged went to Babylon. The, the rest the also ran, made their way to Egypt when things got bad. So uh, <clears throat> at any rate, he's amongst exiles. He's not at home. I guess he'd be in the temple if he was. And he's recovering. Then there's a karma episode where he's just told, if he tells people what he needs to tell them, then... Whether they respond or not, that's their lookout, but he'll have saved his life. He'll have, it'll be noted that he's said what he needs to say. So I suppose it's a bit like um, somebody who's a safety officer in a business, uh, telling people how they're supposed to operate machinery and how they're supposed to behave. Uh, and if they do, then uh, he's got the record that they attended the sessions. And if they don't, um, then it's his problem because they should have all been um, given that training, or it's the business's concern. But if he tells them and they don't follow their example, then it's their fault and not his. And uh, if he tells them they change their ways, then he gets the benefit and they get the benefit too. And it's sort of kind of fairly poetic, fairly repetitive, but that's basically it. If you tell people, then it's on their own head. <coughs> but uh, it's not your fault if they don't listen. <coughs> and you do get the praise with them if they do. And... Uh, then the final paragraph, he's told uh, again that they're not going to listen. Um, he's going to be held captive. He's going to be shut up. I don't know whether it is in his house. He's been told to go to his house, but he's going to be shut up in a house. 
when he's not going to be able to speak, I don't know what that means because it's so dry, he's so uh, thirsty, so parched, <coughs> or whether it's just some sort of sickness, or whether it's some miraculous dumbness that is foisted upon him, or whether it's metaphorical because they're not listening, so it's just no point in speaking, there's nobody to speak to, there's no audience. But when he gives him, when God gives Ezekiel the words to say, he will say it even if they don't listen. So, um, be encouraged to speak out and recognise that even the greats like Ezekiel didn't necessarily make inroads because not everybody listened. Uh, and so they won't. And sometimes uh, standing up for what we believe in might uh, get us into between a rock and a hard place. But uh, God knows, and there will be times when our message, God's message, will go out and will make a difference, and times when it won't. But be inspired by worship in all those circumstances. However um, difficult it is to explain to others the experience you've had, may that sustain and encourage you, and uh, aspire to it. Put yourselves in places where you might get those uh, goosebumps, might, where you might get that mind-bending awe. However your worship leads you in that direction, whether it's walks, whether it's uh, watching a sunset over the Atlantic, whatever it might be, or any other ocean. Other oceans are available. Mark 13 from 14, our second Bible reading. Scroll on to it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Gospels that open the second covenant. So in the Holy Bible, two-thirds of the way through. Open, move to the back. After Matthew, you'll find Mark. We're looking for the chapter number 13. Was that what we were looking for in Ezekiel? There's a bit of uh, symmetry there. Oh, no, three. Mark 13. So that's the large number in the margin. Chapter 13 in the Gospel of Mark. And within chapter 13, we're looking for verse 40. To 23 mark 14 no, mark 13 from verse 14 scroll onto it electronically jesus said to peter james john and andrew but when you see the desolating sacrilege set up where it ought not to be let the reader understand then those in judea must flee to the mountains somebody on a housetop must not go down or enter the house or take anything away someone in the field must not turn back to get a coat woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing infants in those days Pray that it may not be in winter, for in those days there will be suffering, such as not been from the beginning of the creation that God created until now, no, and never will be. And if the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would be saved. But for the sake of the elect whom he chose, he has cut short those days. And if anyone says to you at the time, look, here is the Messiah, or look, there he is, do not believe it. False messiahs and false prophets will appear and produce signs and omens to lead astray, possibly the elect. <clears throat> but be alert, I have already told you everything. So this is put into the mouth of Jesus. The gospel was written after the letters and probably at a time of persecution. Have these words been put into Jesus' mouth as an encouragement to those who are finding themselves being persecuted, who see the Roman standards in the temple <coughs> and uh, are wondering whether they should stay and fight or flee for their lives? fight or flight. And so it's advice to look out for themselves, be uh, wise as serpents, gentle as doves, and get the hell out of there. <clears throat> and um, there are those who read this, um, as it were, written now by a Jesus that is alive now, and we're looking towards a future date if we live in a place of peace and we are devoid of persecution. People think it anticipates a future time. There's a, a group within the freer churches who um, arrange themselves around the idea of a millennium, a thousand years of difficulty and challenge for the church. There are some that say we're in it, some that say we are waiting for it, some that say we've had it. And uh, this feeds that. We might think that uh, the challenges that are presented here are yet to come. But one way or another, um, God tells us to be alert, that uh, Jesus is the true Jesus, there is no other Jesus. Stick with the faith that we had, that will see us through. A bit like uh, training we were talking about earlier on, to see us through a challenge or a difficulty. We've had the training, if we've got the kit, the spiritual armour, the armour of God. If we've made our plans, we know how we've imagined it, we've worked out how we're going to deal with these things as we come up, we've worked our way through the game or the fight or the meeting, we've got our agenda. That's kind of what we need to be here. We need to be prepared. We need to remind ourselves, a bit like in our first reading, that vision of God in Jesus by the Spirit. And that God will sustain us and see us through. 
to the response back in morning prayer on Thursday. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name. You are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. The Song of Zechariah. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We promise to God to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. <coughs> Make her lover keeper three and one, one in three. We thank you for bringing us to the beginning of this day. <coughs> we thank you for reminding us of your presence and for the honesty in scripture of the challenges of our day, persecution, of uh, self-provision, preventing perception of your preaching and a sort of self-contentment, contentment. <coughs> we pray you inspire your church to be the right people in the right place at the right time, speaking your word, acting your rule in an appropriate, compelling, inspiring, liberating way wherever we are and that we might play our part as individuals within that community, within our wider communities. We pray that you will draw people to faith through your love, grace and mercy. World Council Churches, prayers for Bolivia, Brazil, Chile and Peru. <clears throat> we are thankful for the churches who witness and work economically with those of other faiths to build relationships of trust and commitment amid ongoing injustice and oppression. We pray for immigrants and refugees seeking a new home and those who accompany and support them. Christian action, research, and education. Loving God, we pray that Christians will ever increasingly care for their neighbours, helping them to receive justice and support from statutory authorities, providing for their needs, praying and sharing the gospel with them. So if we're looking to offer support from statutory authorities, uh, we need to be prepared to pay our taxes, I would suggest. And that's a way in which Christians can support neighbours, even if they don't get directly involved themselves. And to lobby for publicly funded facilities and provision. From Green Christian, the health of effects of ingesting microplastics are predictably not good. Though the science is in its early stages, writes Andy Corbley, we already know that microplastics rain down over the world from potentially as high up as the jet stream. They are present in the deepest ocean trenches some of the most remote mountain tops or churches looking for better ways to filter microscopic particles of plastic from water source, investigate the properties of food, wood, and other plant material, and found they work extremely well with little cost and potentially unlimited scaling potential. The water filter design, which investors call BioCap, is made of sawdust composed of cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignan, but which itself isn't a very good filter, removing just 10% of micro and nanoparticles of plastic. However, the addition of Polyphenols like tannic acid, a defence chemical found in almost all plants that lack underground root systems, that effectiveness became almost perfect. <clears throat> so we thank God for people who are designing such excellent natural technologies to um, 
filter microplastics. We pray that we continue to recognise the challenge of preventing getting them into the environment in the first place. As uh, <coughs> although they are everywhere, the more we pump in, the more we have to deal with and remove. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission. The fifth of which is our concern for the environment and Pope Francis' prayer for creation includes the lines touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. In our benefit cycle of prayer on Thursdays, we pray for our farmers. We pray for a healthy relationship with the farmers, with their land, with their crops and stock, with their insurers, with their markets. We pray for processors, wholesalers, retailers, hauliers, they have a healthy relationship likewise with the stock, with the plants, crops, with the food products and uh, with their markets and with their suppliers. We pray for a healthy relationship which we as consumers have with our own health, with our environment, may it be informed and wise. May we have a healthy relationship with the retailers and with uh, those who do the marketing, and indeed with the land and the farmers, that that web might entirely be healthy and harmonious, recognising our responsibilities in the Jewish scripture, if not the Christian, to live lightly on the earth, not plough to the edges, not take all the crop, hold some back, leave some for the birds, leave the land fallow once every seven years, Return the land to its uh, clan ownership every 40, etc. We also pray today for our um, committee members looking after the churches in St Mary Chedison, St Anthony Wissett, St Peter Spexel, St Margaret Linstead. The wardens being Joe, Geoffrey, Keith, Malcolm, and then we pray to you for the Treasury uh, Secretaries, others on the PCCs, we pray to increase the numbers on those PCCs, we pray especially for Treasurers, for <coughs> um, Linstead and Spexel and Wissett, we pray for Wardens, for all four, and uh, we pray for another couple of people, perhaps younger people, to get involved in each with time. They can sort the windows, for example, the windows project in Wissett. Thanks for those on the electoral rolls. Don't have a list in, uh, I don't have a list of names in front of me for Chedderton, but we ask God's blessing on will include Claire, Edward, Eve, Henry, Nick and David, Jennifer, Valerie, Diana, Susan, Helena, Hugh, Richard, Kathleen, Thomas and Anne, at Spexel, Betty, the Beryls, Carolyn, or Caroline, Karen, Barbara, Melissa, Roxanne, Patricia, David, Janet, uh, there's Craig Ellis Burke, Francis, and uh, in Linstead, Janet, Sheila, Angela, Irene, Cecilia, Margaret, Derek, Pauline, and Heather. May they all be inspired as they see you working through them. Thank you for the Linstead PCC last night for the Chedderton earlier in the week, and uh, pray God's blessing on Blyford's today. We pray you draw other people in there too, especially needed in uh, Blyford as we've just got basically one person running the whole thing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Thursday morning collect from the book. O God, the author of peace and love of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.